Should junk food be banned? I'm asking this question because I've just seen this article with the headline Obesity rivals smoking as cause of cancer, UK charity warns. Cancer Research UK calls for government intervention to end the epidemic. Obesity is rivaling smoking as a cause of cancer, responsible for more cases of bowel, kidney, ovarian and liver cancer than cigarettes, according to the UK's leading cancer charity. Smoking is still the biggest cause of cancer, but Cancer Research UK has warned that government action to tackle obesity is vital because it is a significant factor in 13 different types of cancer. Obese people now outnumber smokers by 2 to 1. So, if obesity is such a health problem, we must then think of what causes obesity. Well, junk food is clearly a big part of that. If you eat a lot of junk food and you don't exercise much, then you are probably going to put on weight. So this raises the question for me, should there be a minimum age for buying junk food? In the UK, it is now illegal for anyone under the age of 18 to buy tobacco products. So that makes me wonder whether the same kind of age limit should be placed on junk food. Because if the reason that it's illegal for children to buy cigarettes is because they're so bad for your health, why shouldn't the same thing apply to junk food if that's so bad for your health? I mean, if you saw young children eating burgers or chocolate bars, shouldn't that be considered just as shocking or inappropriate as if you saw those young children smoking? Instinctively, I feel like smoking seems far more shocking somehow, but I wonder if that's just because it's a cultural thing. It's because we've known for a lot longer how bad smoking is for your health that it would seem shocking to see like a six-year-old child smoking. But children have been eating burgers and chocolate bars for a very long time, so that's probably why it wouldn't look as shocking, but maybe that needs to change. Maybe attitudes towards this do need to change. Let's take a look at what debatewise.org has to say about this. The first point it makes is Junk food is highly unhealthy and can transform fit, unhealthy human beings into obese, lazy people. Is this what we want Earth to become for the future generations? I should think not. Eating too much junk food can cause your life to be shortened, and this is terrible. This is why I believe junk food should be banned. And the opposing argument says Junk food isn't that bad. Healthy food can be just as bad sometimes. And when people try to change it, it just doesn't work. For instance, my school's canteen had a food change to make the food healthier. One day they cooked healthy fish and chips, and the people who spent $5 on it got no chips and a tiny half-frozen piece of fish. This could happen to any other canteen, and I strongly advise against it happening, as it will turn out not to work. Well, that's a stupid example. That just looks like they just didn't do a very good job there. You know, they tried to do healthy fish and chips and they gave no chips and a tiny half frozen piece of fish. Well, that's not a good healthy meal. So that's a rubbish example. So next it says, The rate of obesity in the United States has risen dramatically. According to the CDC, more than one third of the population is considered obese. The rate of obesity is similar among children to the rate of obesity in the general population. Many more people are not obese but overweight. According to USA Today, around two-thirds of the population is overweight. According to Science Daily, even moderate obesity can substantially shorten life expectancy. Overconsumption of junk food is a major contributing factor in the obesity epidemic. Many junk foods are extremely high in calories and it is easy for a person to exceed the recommended number of calories when they eat junk foods. Banning junk food in schools would reduce the amount of junk food that kids eat. Furthermore, some schools have already taken this step. And the opposing view says, If junk foods are banned, kids will still eat junk food while in school. Instead of getting it from the school vending machines, they'll sneak it in. This could create a climate of evasiveness among students. In some cases, students may even sneak out of school to buy junk food. Additionally, junk food is still likely to be freely available at home. Therefore, it's possible that kids would simply binge on junk foods when they aren't in school. This could cause their overall consumption of junk food to remain unchanged. Furthermore, banning junk food could increase the sense of boredom among students. This could potentially result in decreased academic performance. Another drawback to banning junk foods in schools is that it could be more difficult to prepare meals for students. By contrast, many junk foods can be prepared quickly. Furthermore, healthier food tends to be more expensive. The increased expense could result in an increase in school taxes. It could also result in an increase in the cost of school lunches. So the next point says, According to WebMD, eating too much junk food could result in decreases in brain function. 
According to Consumer Health Digest, there are several types of food that are bad for brain health. The additives and preservatives in junk food can have impairing effects on cognition. Foods with a high level of salt also have been shown to reduce cognitive performance. Studies have also shown that fatty foods impair cognition. In addition, foods that contain residual amounts of pesticides might cause negative effects on brain health. Many health foods contain chemicals that are necessary for optimal brain function, such as omega-3s. According to the University of Maryland, or Maryland as I think Americans call it, omega-3s are extremely important. A deficiency of omega-3s has been linked to a number of common mental health disorders such as depression and ADHD. It's even thought that a deficiency of omega-3s could make one more prone to develop severe mental health conditions such as schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Banning junk food in schools could encourage students to eat more healthy food. This could reduce the prevalence of mental health problems amongst students. It could also improve the school performance of students. And there is no opposing argument to that. The next argument is... Type 2 diabetes is becoming more common and overconsumption of junk food can increase one's risk of developing it. There are two reasons why type 2 diabetes can be caused by eating too much junk food. Many junk foods contain high volumes of sugar... If high volumes of sugar are consumed over a long period of time, the body can stop producing enough insulin. This can lead to type 2 diabetes. In addition, type 2 diabetes can be induced by becoming overweight or obese. In fact, many people who have type 2 diabetes are able to cure the condition by losing weight. Serious health complications can result from type 2 diabetes. In fact, type 2 diabetes can even result in serious circulation problems that can result in amputation. In fact, diabetes is considered to be one of the primary causes of death in the United States. According to the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, type 2 diabetes can develop during one's childhood under some circumstances. Banning junk foods in schools could result in a decreased rate of obesity and fewer kids would overconsume sugar. These habits may stick with kids for life and this could further reduce the frequency of type 2 diabetes. And there's no opposing argument for this. Next it says, Heart disease is a common cause of death in the United States and it has been known to develop in children younger than 18, according to WebMD. Poor diet is a major contributing factor to the development of heart disease. Therefore, an improved diet from a junk food ban in school could help reduce one's risk of developing heart disease. The reduction in obesity rates that could result from banning junk food in schools could have a particularly significant effect in terms of reducing the frequency of heart disease. And the opposing view says, It's unknown how much kids' consumption of junk food would be reduced by banning junk foods in schools. If the ban didn't reduce the amount of junk food that kids eat, the rate of heart disease would likely remain unchanged. Next it says, During childhood, bones are developing. Growing children need a significant quantity of calcium each day for bone development. Without enough calcium, serious defects in bone development can occur. A poor diet can increase one's risk of developing osteoporosis, according to UPI. In addition to the lack of calcium in junk food, many junk foods contain high levels of sugar and fat. This can weaken bones. If junk foods are consumed in schools, this may cause kids to continue to eat a poor diet as adults. It's thought that the first six years of life are crucial in ensuring that a proper diet for bone health is maintained throughout one's life. And there's no opposing argument for that. And next it says, Banning junk food is likely to have an impact on one's diet throughout their entire life. Prominent psychologists feel that healthy habits are formed during childhood. According to Blake's Lee, a prominent psychologist, dietary habits formed in childhood tend to last throughout life. And the opposing argument says, If children sneak in junk food from home, banning junk foods in schools won't help children to learn healthier ways of eating for life. Instead, the time and effort that went with sneaking in junk food could reinforce the habit of eating it even more. Well, that argument just goes to show that how important it is for parents to have healthy food at home as well. You see, that argument doesn't negate the need for healthy food in schools. It just emphasises how important it is for children to have healthy food all day, at home and at school. Next, it says, Some schools in California have changed their policies on junk food. Instead of serving it in the school vending machines, they have switched over to serving carrots and other healthy foods. At these schools, it has been estimated that students consumed an average of 160 calories less over the course of the school day. 
This is a significant decrease and there was no evidence that the students overconsumed junk food to any greater degree at home. This would be a significant enough reduction in caloric intake to significantly reduce one's risk of becoming obese. If food that is served in vending machines at schools has health benefits, it would help to ensure that students get proper nutrition. If students are given the opportunity to buy healthy foods or junk foods from the vending machines, it's likely that many students would choose the junk foods over the healthier foods. Given the success of these bans, it's likely that more and more schools will begin to follow suit in banning junk food. At least, it's likely that more schools will stop selling junk food in their vending machines. And there's no opposing argument against that. Next, it says, San Francisco has put warning labels on sugary sodas. This effort is also being considered by a state lawmaker in California, according to Reuters. While the products haven't been taken off the shelves in any location, the effort is intended to inform the public about the dangers of drinking large amounts of sugary beverages. Given the fact that governments have issued warnings about sugary sodas, it makes us wonder if we really should allow them to be sold in schools. In addition to warnings on sugary sodas, warnings have been considered for foods that have a high concentration of salt. This is due to the fact that excessive salt intake can cause hypertension, which is high blood pressure. Some school-aged children suffer from the condition. Many popular junk foods, such as potato chips, tend to have extremely high levels of salt. It's not just San Francisco that is taking a stance on overconsumption of junk food. In France, there recently was a law passed to prohibit refills of sugary sodas. And the opposing view is, while these laws have been successfully implemented, many feel that this is evidence that bans on junk food in schools could be a stepping stone to giving the government increased power over our day-to-day lives. A bill was even considered in New York City that would prevent sodas larger than 16 ounces from being sold. There was a large amount of opposition to this law, it can be difficult to determine where to draw the line as to what constitutes junk food. Foods vary considerably in terms of their nutritional value, so it could be challenging to create a universal definition of what junk food is. Next it says, While many things on the McDonald's menu are still very much junk food, the chain has begun to make an effort to reduce the amount of trans fats in their foods. According to CBS, one of their French fry oils no longer contains any trans fats. This helps to reduce the negative effects of the grease on the cardiovascular system. Furthermore, they have begun to incorporate healthier menu options in addition to the junk foods they offer. For instance, McDonald's has started offering a variety of salads. In addition, they have begun to offer snack wraps with a relatively low amount of calories. This illustrates that Americans are becoming more and more health conscious. Therefore, many people would likely be in favour of banning junk foods in schools. And the opposing view is the fact that McDonald's and other fast food chains have made an effort to make their menu items healthier doesn't necessarily mean that people would tend to support banning junk foods in schools. McDonald's and other fast food restaurants still sell quite a lot of junk food. Therefore, many people would likely be disappointed about a ban on junk foods in schools. Another argument against banning junk food is to ban junk food would be a complete failure. It would also leave people feeling that their freedom of choice was taken. A better way to handle junk food is to make laws more strict about ingredient labels. Perhaps require foods with little nutritional value to have their nutrition facts be bolder and in a bright colour. And there's no opposing argument against that. And finally, it says, Every moving junk food franchise accumulates approximately $1 million per day. There are over 500 such franchises all over Australia and USA. Multinational companies like Lay's, Doritos, etc. also make in the millions and billions. So imagine the amount of international money that would be drawn in every month. This kind of cash flow is a necessity for big country economies to run. Hence, we should not let fast food joints or junk food producing companies be shut down. So there you go, those are the main arguments for and against banning junk food for young people. But what do you think? Why not post a comment to let me know? Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting or helpful in some way. If so, why not give it a like and perhaps subscribe to the channel as well to see future videos. Anyway, until next time, I wish you the very best of health.